welcome everyone here and sincerely thank you for joining us on this sad but very special, very special occasion. We're going to start the proceedings with just a short video to remind you of our life. Nikki, take it away. service to his customers or patrons as he called them. Devoted to his family. He was the ultimate provider. Always worked part-time jobs, turned some extra money. Bridget Mark and I never recall wanting for anything growing up, whether it be toys, skates, sticks, golf clubs, etc. He was our biggest fan. He never missed any of our games. Even in the harshest winter weather at Lincoln and Brighton Arena, as some of you may recall. When Bridget was a baby, he'd stop by in between his taxi fares. He'd run in, blow past Dorothy, just to get a quick peek at Bridget 
and her bassinet. He also loved attending his grandkids' events when they came about. Devoted to the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> his sister Anna's husband, Edward. Chucky. Oh, yeah. see Chucky there. Chucky. Chucky it's Sam. a sad week in the Stan Campiano family. My cousin Chuck, 63 years old, lost a battle with leukemia and cancer last week. We celebrated his life last Friday, 63 years old, which again puts in perspective how lucky we are to have had art to 96. So that was one of the last Bill's parties in 2018 with the family. Art was an incredibly loyal Buffalo Bills fan. He very rarely ever missed a game rarely ever missed a play in a game. <laughs> it was always a dilemma for Sarah and I to get Bart out of the stadium quickly <laughs> so that he beat the traffic back to Rochester. It was always a dilemma. And then as he got older, we had to make sure he stopped at the restroom first. <laughs> Our only regret is he was never able to see the Bills win a Super Bowl. <laughs> Maybe this year. Maybe this year. <laughs> Devoted to. Devoted to. Dorothy. For 54 years. Our mom passed 11 years ago tomorrow. For several years before her death, a remarkable role reversal took place where God had to transform himself into a housekeeper and caregiver with a little help from Bridget, of course. I made a lot of help from Bridget. Prior to that, he never knew how to boil an egg. <laughs> Suddenly, he was shopping, cooking, and cleaning. Devoted to people and kindness. Art never met a stranger. No one loves people as much as our dad did. He taught us if you can't say something nice, don't say something at all. He was always kind, caring, complimentary. He was the consummate host, making you feel welcome and always replenishing your drink. <laughs> There was never a conversation I had with my dad that didn't start with, how sad, no, I'm Nikki. Always wanted to know how the children were. To illustrate that, I'd like to invite my brother Mark up to share a little example of Bart's kindness. Thank you, Brian. Well, first of all, as part of the uh, greatest generation, there were 16 million veterans. No, there were 16 million men and women who served in World War II. Now there are 220,328. That is 2% left. So every time you say honor and service, thank you to one of those people that we still have, as we, we that's what it's all about. So along those lines, every one of those veterans has a story. I have one. Me and Brian, we, we argue about how old we were, but we had to be, it had to be 1969, I think. Brian thinks that would have been me, what, oh, I was born in 67, 12. Uh, however, he, he thinks it would have been a little younger than that. But we were at Captain, we were at the old rock bar. And we actually had our caps on, the beautiful red bison's splendid hat with a white bee, and we're walking into the rock pile. We're <laughs> another block and we're in. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, whoosh, this person comes flying between me and Brian <laughs> and Bart and grabs both caps at once. He pulled for the bison's headgear. Come on! So Bart, being the baseball player, 
he, he had to be Brian was saying about 42 man. He still had wheels. And he took off after that son of a gun. <laughs> he's not getting our, he's not getting those Bison's hats. And Brian, I don't know where Brian was. I'm right after Bart. I got my PF flyers on. I think Brian had loafers on. <laughs> The pennies, being a puppy, is a little Rochester, he's a pup. <laughs> so that's what was going on. So to make a, a short story longer, we, we Bart follows this kid into the backyard somewhere near the rock pile in the backyard. So the three of us are there, and he's cornered. He's cornered. So. He says, he turns, you see, Brian finally made it there. <laughs> and he turns and he says, hey, are you gonna, are you gonna have these kids fight me? And I and I didn't say a word, but I didn't say a word. And Bart says, no, I'm gonna give you two tickets to the baseball game today. That's the kind of man Bart Salvatore Stan Campiano is, was, and forever will be in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, God. I remember that story like it was yesterday. I can still feel the feet slipping out of my tummy holes. In the last. We're eventually going to let you eat. And we're eventually going to let you drink as well. Um, in the last 11 years after Dorothy's passing, he had to reinvent himself and rekindle his zest for life, as Matt so eloquently put it. What ensued were frequent Greyhound bus trips to Rochester for long weekends with Sarah and I. All the coordination, of course, had to go through Bridget first. All the logistics and all the packing and all that. But he loved staying through Monday night so he could watch my senior beer league hockey games at Thomas Creek and Rock, followed by Monday Night Football. We saw all the endings of Monday Night Football because we'd play at 10, a 10 p.m. and then we'd drink till 2 a.m. and watch the Monday Night Football game. Needless to say, Bart was in his cups with my hockey buddies. I absolutely loved my hockey buddies, and they loved him. The O'Brien family, spread across the country, adopted him. The extended O'Brien clan, Sarah, they came from a big family, five siblings, right? That clan adopted by they're all over the country. They weren't able to be here today, but I wanted to have Marsha and Randy have joined us via video. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marcia O'Brien, Sarah's sister and Brian's sister-in-law. And I'm Marcia's husband, Randy McCoskey. On behalf of the O'Brien clan, we want to express our condolences on the passing of Bart. The Stan Campiano family was kind enough to share Bart with us, and he became a beloved member of our extended family for many, many years. Bart was a staple at our gatherings, birthday parties, holidays, sporting events, weddings, and our own family reunions. Everyone loved Bart. He was just so easy to love. We all looked forward to spending time with him. Bart was a great role model for all of us, young and old alike. He was such a gentleman, always personable, dressed to the nines, engaging in conversation. He knew all the family connections and he personalized every relationship. He knew the parents, he knew the kids, and he even knew what they were up to. Bart helped fill a void in our family following the death of our dad, Coyne O'Brien. They were both true examples of the greatest generation. World War II vets, they were unselfish, full of integrity, and always putting family first. They were good friends, and dad had the highest respect for his friend Bart. So it is with a heavy heart, but the fondest of memories that we ask you to raise a glass to a life well lived and to a man whose character we should all aspire to. To Bart Stan Campiano. To Bart.
and friends, and Chucky Stan Campiano. Amen. That champagne toast is courtesy of the O'Brien clan. Where is my wife, Sarah? Sarah, where are you? Oh, you're on the, you're taking a picture. To say that the O'Brien family enriched my father's life would be the understatement of the year. And Sarah, I, I can never thank you enough because it's because of you that orchestrated all that and gave Bart so many more memories by meeting your family. I'm forever grateful. Thank you. I love you. The karaoke journey. <laughs> oh boy. I didn't get another drink. <laughs> Two new hips. Two new hips. At age 85 and 89. Again, thanks to Sarah talking him into the ease of the hip replacement. That enabled him to be mobile again. Launching, launching a robust social life. He was a woman, man. <laughs> From one of his karaoke buddies. At one point, he was singing karaoke five nights a week. Practicing at home the other two days to make certain he remembered the words. And yes, he was always looking to dance for the pretty woman after karaoke. I always loved getting his calls in Rochester to add more songs to his Spotify playlist. Do you have Plano Hunter? Do you have Edda James? We never had the heart to critique his very questionable voice. <laughs> Dorothy had the voice in the family, not Bart. But how can you not admire a friendly and dapper 90-year-old man giving it a go on the, in the karaoke bars? As his friends will attest to, they thought Frank Sinatra was in the house. And they loved it. His last six months. He lived independently through April of this year. Then dementia took hold, forcing him into a memory care unit and ultimately a nursing home. He was zombie-like, depressed, unhappy, no longer part. In late July, my brother-in-law, Matt, who I love dearly, Matt, raise your hand so people know who you are. Matt said to Bridget, we got to get Bart out of here. Why don't we bring him home? Why don't we bring him home? So that's what we did. Matt and Bridget decided to move him with, put him out of the nursing home, moved him in with Matt and Bridget in early August. What transpired was a remarkable turnaround. It's amazing what love from family will do to someone's spirits. He had quality time with his great-grandchild, Conrad, his first and only great-grandchild at the moment. There were some tough days, but there were also some incredibly magical days where we actually, we actually had Bart back. It was amazing. Like, whoa, uh, what's happening here? <laughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't also, where's Bridget? Bridget? Bridget and Matt, thank you. Thank you for what you did for Bart. It's absolutely incredible how he responded to your love and care in those last six months. And for that matter, Bridget, thank you for the love and care, not only for Byron, but for the last 11 years, you were managed his life, and you did an outstanding job. I need a lot of help. Mark and I are forever grateful. You are the best sister in the world, and I'm forever grateful for what you did for Byron. And Dorothy Carter, and Matt, thank you for all that support. We 
talked about those magical moments. I'd like to share with you one example of one, one of those magical days that Sarah and I had with Bart 43 days ago, September 30th.
because that's what Bart would want. Enjoy each other. And for those of you that maybe don't know each other, as I mentioned, Bart never met a stranger. There's one question that I'd like us to ask a lot this afternoon. There's no better conversation starter for those of you that don't yet know each other, is how did you know Bart? Good job. And I look forward to hearing those stories. Again, on behalf of Bridget and Mark and I, thank you. Enjoy our lunch.